<sighs> Where am I? Hello, Joseph. I want to play a little game. Your entire life, you've played trap cards, and now you're trapped in this bathroom. I don't know. I, I feel like I can probably move around a little bit. Th this doesn't seem that bad. Look down at your feet. Pouring out of that faucet is a highly corrosive acid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see it. For years, you've claimed floodgates are okay. Now, you must gate out of this room before the flood annihilates you. Make your choice. Wait, who are you? Oh, uh, this might be hard to believe, but I am a sexy dragon lady. Alright. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. Konami, I have never wanted anything more than to premiere these cards in the TCG. I am the only duelist living who likes trap cards. I am the only duelist living who will not make a Kobayashi's Dragon Maid joke when I'm showing these off. And I am the only duelist living who will not point out the incredibly detailed armpit on the boss monster. So here's the list, and a lot of the theory for this one is lifted whole cloth from OCG lists that are currently topping. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first... This video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the pack opening website that everyone uses for their progression series, but you might have missed it's also got a deck builder, a card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. I personally use it to post the Chalice Line monthly deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. With that, let's look at Labyrinth. Labyrinth is a series of fiend-type monsters and trap cards inspired by equal parts Beauty and the Beast and serial killer H.H. H. Holmes. I think the lore is the beautiful dragon Labyrinth has invited you to her silver castle, and then immediately upon entering you are thrown into a fucked up Joker style trap designed to kill you. The cards fit snugly into three sub archetypes. The Maids, which plus you when a normal trap removes an opponent's monster from the field. The Furniture, which discards a card from your hand to set a Labyrinth spell or trap and then returns when you flip it up. And the Traps themselves, which are mostly ass. Because these cards have such specific restrictions, you want to fill every crevice of this list with specifically cards that benefit from being sent via the effects of the furniture, and traps that specifically remove opponents' monsters from the field. This means that some extremely powerful floating traps like Lost Wind are just not impactful enough to play, as they'll never trigger the effects of your maids. We've selected some of the best of the best. Dogmatica Punishment, Compulsory Evacuation Device, Torrential Tribute, Ice Dragon's Prison, and the newly released Archfiend's Glitch. In terms of discardable monsters, Backjack does pretty much everything you want. Pluses from the graveyard, adds traps, and in a pinch is a fiend for glitch. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First up, the Eldritch of the deck, which I am playing one of because I fear no removal spell, Labyrinth of the Silver Castle. Your opponent cannot activate monster effects in response to the activation of your normal trap cards. You can only use each of the following effects of Labyrinth of the Silver Castle once per turn. You can target a normal trap in your graveyard, set it to your field, but it can't be activated unless you control the fiend. And if a monster leaves the field by your normal trap's effect, you can destroy a card your opponent controls or a random card in their hand. Next up, we've got the rest of the maids. Three copies of Ariana, the good one. If she's normal or special, you can add a Labyrinth from your deck to your hand, and if a monster leaves the field by your normal trap's effect, you can draw a card, then special summon a fiend monster or set a spell trap from your hand. We are playing one copy of Labyrinth's Servant, Ariane, though realistically we could play zero. You can send a normal trap from your hand or set on your field to the graveyard, a special summon a level 4 or lower fiend from your deck in defense position, and if a monster leaves the field by your normal trap's effect, you can draw a card, then, like the other one, special summon a fiend monster or set a spell trap from your hand. For furniture, we're on three copies of Chandra and three copies of Stovey. They both have the same first effect. You can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard and discard a card to set a labyrinth spell trap directly from your hand or deck. If a monster leaves the field by your normal trap's effect while this card is in your graveyard, Stovey special summons itself and Chandra adds itself back to the hand. Finally, we're on Backjack, a very old card that allows you to, during your opponent's turn, banish this card from the graveyard, excavate the top card of your deck, and if it's a normal trap, set it and you can activate it this turn. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can look at the top three cards of your deck and then place them back on top in any order so you're always hitting a trap. Next, we've got three copies of Ash Blossom, three copies of Pot of Extravagance, one copy of Labyrinth, Labyrinth. I don't love this card. If you activate a non-Labyrinth normal trap card, you get a special summon a fiend monster from your hand or graveyard, or a set welcome Labyrinth. It also pops a card on the field. That's the only one of the Labyrinths that we are playing. We're playing this card because in a scenario where we already have access to welcome Labyrinth, we can search it off of the furniture. 
Welcome Labyrinth lets you special summon a Labyrinth from your deck, usually the boss monster, and you can't special summon monsters from the deck or extra until the end of the next turn after this card resolves, except for Fiends. If a monster leaves the field by your normal trap's effect while this card is in the graveyard, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can set it. This makes it a great pitch off of the furniture. We're playing three copies of Archfiend Glitch, uh, pretty non-specific for how it does have the monsters from the archetype in the art. If you control a Fiend monster, target a card on the field, destroy it, then send a Fiend monster from your deck to the grave. After that, we're playing three infip uh it's not fantastic but it is a hand trap and we are a trap deck so good to have both of them we've got three copies of dogmatic punishment three copies of compulse two torrential and two ice dragons prison in the extra we just have a punishment board that dovetails nicely with extravagance two copies of fossil machine skull wagon three copies of entis one flower cardian light flare this is our high attack target for punishment one omega double wind pegasus add in suster two link rebo two relinquished anima and two dark so with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against S-Force, and I don't care how many waves of support this deck gets, I am not taking it seriously. Our opponent's going to begin with a Neo Space Connector, we will infip it and hope for the best, and because they're playing S-Force, the best comes to pass. This is why I'm not taking it seriously, folks. They're going to set a copy of Specimen and pass back to us. We'll activate the effect of Chandra at end step to set a copy of Welcome and draw off return. Backjack's great. We're going to go for the Welcome Labyrinth to get ourselves a copy of Ariana, then afterwards we can activate the effect of Ariana in order to get ourselves a copy of Stovey. We'll go to the battle phase and walk over our opponent's monster, then in main phase two we can activate the effect of Stovey, discarding this copy of backjack triggering the effect of the backjack to flip our deck perfectly set two and pass turn our opponent draws for turn will activate backjack and reveal off the top of our deck a compulse we'll set that bad boy then activate welcome labyrinth to get labyrinth from our deck and then let our opponent go to main phase one they're going to go for edge laser to summon this copy of gravitino they're going to trigger the effect of the gravitino in order to add a card to hand then go to the battle phase that forces out the compulse we will return the gravitino to hand trigger ariana and labyrinth and stove and chandra and welcome see how this deck gets out of hand pretty much immediately we're going to add that chandra and that stove back to our field and our hand respectively before popping our opponent's last remaining monster and drawing a card setting a dogmatic punishment they'll go to end step and we'll draw for turn we should be able to wrap this one up we'll normal summon the chandra and go to the battle phase they'll activate reinforced truth we will ash blossom and then they will activate their copy of specimen which we will take the target for with idp our second match is up against Speedroid, and we are going second again. Are we ever going to win a die roll with this deck? Our opponent's going to begin with a copy of Speedroid Scratch, adding from deck to hand a copy of Terror Top. Oh god, I do not miss this card being a three. They're going to go from Terror Top into Takatomborg. This card is actually much better in its associated archetype. It's obviously still crazy in rank three strategies, but here it's going to be able to tribute itself to get a red eyed dice. They're going to red eyed dice for this Terror Top and then go into a Cork Blaster, at which point I will fire off the Infip. You can't just be firing the Infip on anything. Cork Blaster and Rubber Band Shooter are really good. Everything else is just extension. They're going to go Red Eye Dice into Magical Hound and make a 7, finally ending on a Crystal Clear Wing Synchro Dragon. And I have no idea how we're outing this, but setting four traps is probably a good start. We're going to begin with an Ariana. They're going to Ash Blossom it. We'll set four and pass back to our opponent. They'll draw for turn and we will Punishment. They will activate the effect of their monster. We will Welcome Labyrinth. They will Ash Blossom, so we are right back where we started, but thankfully we still do have removal. We're going to fire off this copy of Compulse, and then we will use Ariana to cycle. We find off the top of our deck a copy of IDP, so uh, looking pretty good. We'll draw for turn, and it's not anything that advances our game state, but if we draw something that trades one for one with our opponent every single turn, we should be fine. And if they keep drawing hand traps, we're going to be really good. Uh, the thing about Speedroid is it needs multiple cards to go off, and as long as we can prevent them from amassing multiple cards, we should be okay. They'll draw for turn, and... Oh, they are really drawing every single hand trap in their deck in order, huh? Finally, another Ariana. We're going to normal summon that. We'll activate the effect and... Okay, fine. It's a two-turn clock now. Are you happy? We'll go to the battle phase and hit in for 32 and then pass back to our opponent. They have to draw something pretty good off the top to get out of this and... Oh, speed recovery does kind of qualify. They're going to fire that off, reborning this copy of Terror Top, triggering the effect of the Terror Top, which we will Ash Blossom. Afterwards, they will activate in the graveyard the effect of the Magic Hound. We will IDP, banishing their target alongside the Terror Top, at which point we will trigger the effect of the Ariana and the Welcome Labyrinth, which should seal up the game. We'll set this Dogmatica Punishment that we draw. We'll draw for turn, and of course, it's her. We're going to activate this Compulse to return our opponent's monster back to the hand. We will trigger the effect of the Ariana, and then we will Normal Summon this copy of Labyrinth. They'll go for the Dural and Lockbird. We'll go to the battle phase and clean up this one. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's on Adventure Dragon Link, and if you're unfamiliar with this deck, you'd better get familiar. This is going to be really popular coming up. We have lost the die roll again for the third time in a row, so let's see what our opponent can accomplish. They're going to begin with a copy of Striker Dragon, activating the effect and the effect to put this copy of Rocket Synchron back in hand, firing off a boot sector launch afterwards to summon both the Rocket Synchron and this Absu Router. Next up is the Chaos Ruler, unsurprisingly. They'll go for the Absu Router in order to get a tracer to hand, then fire off the Chaos Ruler, finding off the top... 
Yeah, pretty much everything they could ever want. They'll get the Knock Division, then activate the Enchantress they milled. They'll go for right here and get a token and a Fateful Adventure, which they will then activate in order to get a Wandering Griffin Rider. I'll trigger the effect of the Griffin Rider and then trigger the effect of the Fateful Adventure for a Draco back. Afterwards, get a special summon from their deck, a copy of Rocket Tracer and a copy of Knock Division Dragon from the hand. From here, they can link summon a copy of Spheres and then trigger in the graveyard this copy of Knock Division Dragon using Tracer to tag into a Rocket Recharger, a Quad Boral, and then, of course, tagging into the Recharger and the Tracer again to make a Boreload Savage, equipping said Quad Boral before passing. We might be able to do this. We'll draw for turn. Ooh, weird one. We're going to go for the Extravagance here. We need to draw something off the top, and that is uh, maybe it. We're going to go for this copy of Chandra. Our opponent's going to go for the Hieratic Seal, but thankfully, we can activate Chandra from field, so even if they negate, they have to bounce one of their own cards. They'll go for the Fateful Adventure, then go for Hieratic Seal, and Safert comes out. Okay, let's set five and pass. We might be able to do this. They'll draw for turn. They're going to begin with a copy of Quick Launch to go into a Tracer. At resolution, we're going to flip up this copy of Dogmatica Punishment. They'll chain Tracer, we'll chain Compulse, they'll chain Bora Load, we'll chain Infip, and now we get to actually resolve the punishment. At resolution, we're going to send a copy of Entis to the graveyard so we can also eat our opponent's Safert. We're going to trigger the effect of the Chandra in Grave, but they have a DD Crow for that. Shoot, that's really bad. They're going to go for Foolish Burial here to send a copy of Levineer, then Safert to bring the Levineer back. Oh, that's a big punish. They will summon it and eat our board. I go for the IDP here, summoning back the Recharger, but I should have probably gone for the Chaos Ruler because now they get to make Zombie Vampire. They will fire that off. We both mill a bunch and lo and behold, they found a Nibiru. Okay, let's go to game two. So it's time for game two and oh my god, we're going first. How long has it been? Our opponent's hand is weird. It's got full combo, but probably not through interaction and we have that. <laughs> they have three hand traps in their opener, but they don't really interact with us at all. We'll go for the Ariana here. They're going to fire off the Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. They don't need to know. We already drew the Welcome Labyrinth. Okay, they need to know a little. We're going to fire off the Welcome Labyrinth, and there she is. Our opponent's going to normal summon a Tracer, which is a weird start. So I'm going to fire off the Compulse and hope it ends the turn, and it does, thankfully. We draw off Ariana, set this copy of Welcome Labyrinth, and we should be able to assemble lethal somehow. We're going to go for the Welcome Labyrinth, summon another copy of Ariana, trigger the Ariana, we'll get another piece of furniture to hand, then we'll normal summon this copy of Chandra. We'll go to the battle phase, and I mean, I haven't really done the math, but this is lethal, right? Oh my god, you're kidding me. It's 400 off. Okay, we're going to go for the Chandra here to get the third welcome. We will set this glitch. We'll trigger the effect of the Silver Castle. That's going to get Ghost Ogred, but I really just want the Compulse. We'll set one and pass back to our opponent. Ah, another hand trap. I see. We'll Compulse the Tracer. They will chain Tracer, targeting itself. Uh, from here, they're going to get a copy of Rocket Synchron from deck. Afterwards, we will glitch to pop the Rocket Synchron in order to send a copy of Backjack, trigger the effect of the Ariana and the Stove and the Chandra and the Backjack and the Welcome. We're going to reset the Welcome. We're going to shuffle the top of our deck. We're going to summon back the stove, add back the Chandra, and then at resolution, we're going to go ahead and set this copy of Compulse, activate the effect of Backjack to set this copy of IDP, then fire the IDP on the summon of the White Dragon Wyver Burster to banish their remaining cards. So it's time for that old important game three, and uh, this one could go either way. Uh, double Infip is obviously very good in the opener, but Double Quick Launch is also strong. They're going to go for Safer. We fire the Infip here, just hoping that it ends the turn, and of course it doesn't. They're going to fire this copy of Quick Launch, summoning from deck a copy of Tracer. After that, they're going to Link Summon a Striker Dragon and get themselves a Boot Sector Launch, and then use the Striker Dragon to put back the Tracer, then activate the Boot Sector Launch to summon both the Tracer and the Rocket Synchron. Very based, very red-pilled. Afterwards, they're going to go into Chaos Ruler. Fine, we'll fire off the second Infip. All right, we are now a Sitting Duck. Do your worst. Yeah, that's uh, pretty bad. They're going to go Quick Launch into a Rocket Tracer, then trigger the effect of the Chaos Ruler, then trigger the effect of the Rocket Tracer, then summon from deck a Rocket Recharger, and then pass turn. Strange. We'll go for the Chandra here in order to set a copy of Welcome Labyrinth, and maybe we can do this. We'll draw for turn. We're going to normal summon this copy of Ariana. That will fiend the Red Archfiend Abyss. We'll activate Welcome Labyrinth, but gah, Labyrinth caps out at 29. We don't actually have a very convincing out to a monster with this much attack. So we're just going to have to pass back to our opponent, who is going to draw off the top of the deck the right of Aramisir. Sure. We'll go for the Welcome Labyrinth here, and then trigger the effect of the Ariana in a new chain. That's going to fiend out this copy of Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, and things are looking very bad. From here, our opponent can go into Dark, go to the battle phase, clear our board, trigger the effect of the Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss to bring back the Rocket Tracer, and then in main phase 2, use the Dark to reborn our Labyrinth. Okay, let's draw something crazy off the top. And that's not it. All right. So we're back with the deck, and color me impressed. A different die roll could have changed that entire thing. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it doesn't feel bricky. One of the many problems with decks like Dynamorphia is that if you draw too many monsters or too many traps, you are screwed. But in this deck, both types of cards are also 
both other types of cards. Two, Labyrinth herself is extremely broken. She takes one-for-ones into three-for-one territory. Amazing stuff. And three, I love Backjack here. It feels good to discard, to summon, it's a fiend for glitch, and it's a way to get to the unsearchable but high-impact trap cards. And the cons. One, Labyrinth caps out at 2,900. Now, 2,900 might seem like a big number, but a lot of unaffected bosses cap out at 3,000, and you have basically no way to deal with them. Two, its methods of interaction are pretty limited. You sort of live or die based on your opener, and while the trap cards are varied in their applications, the fact that they aren't searchable hurts things. And three, because you have to be playing trap cards that remove monsters, you're missing out on a ton of powerful traps that Konami's printed in the past several years that just don't do that. All in all, this is a really powerful archetype. I think that it has the potential to come into its own, but it will either need more support or a more favorable metagame before I feel confident calling it extremely good.